Hey everybody, my name is Thomas Dreher and I'm a part of the REAIM National Steering Committee and today we are going to go over a presentation on the PRISM contextual factors and REAIM outcomes. This slide deck is going to be available for you to use and it's designed for you to be adapted and be able to present it to the target audience of your choosing whether it's your class or your colleagues or anybody that you want to introduce REAIM and PRISM to. And what we're going to go through today is re-aim and prism in one slide. We're going to go over core issues and understanding re-aim. We're going to go over how re-aim evolved into prism. And we're going to go over some of the common misconceptions and misunderstanding and clarify those issues surrounding re-aim. And then finally, we're going to talk about how re-aim addresses health equity issues. And I like this image here as well of a puzzle pieces of re-aim and prism because it shows how re-aim and prism are meant to complement each other in your use of helping implement your interventions. So let's talk about PRISM and together with REAIM and sort of how PRISM fits into one slide. So PRISM stands for the Practical Robust Implementation and Sustainability Model. And it really starts in the center of that circle with the evidence-based intervention components and the implementation strategies, because those are the core parts of what you're trying to do. You have your intervention that you know is effective and you have to have your strategies to implement them. And surrounding that circle are the remain re-aim outcomes. And that consists of reach, effectiveness, adoption, implementation, and maintenance. And then when you start to expand past that circle, starting with the top, that changing external context, you reach part of where PRISM comes to fit in. So that external context might be policy, your organizational structure, things of that nature that might impact the implementation of your intervention. And down at the bottom, with your changing internal context, that might be the characteristics of your staff. That might be those individuals that you're trying to reach, or those different characteristics that might be impactful to for who is adopting and coming to receive your intervention. And then to the right, you'll see cross-cutting issues. And this sort of highlights the part of PRISM that is interesting because it talks about the proportion who benefit from your intervention, which can include both your adoption and your reach. And it emphasizes representativeness when you get to health equity of who it's benefiting. So thinking about the subset of demographics of individuals that are being reached. And then also how they are benefited and what kind of adaptations are being made so your intervention fits into different systems. And then finally, the costs that are incurred. And when you get over to this fit, it acknowledges that none of these exist in isolation and that you have to think about how your intervention components, your implementation strategies, and all of these inner external contexts fit together in order to and impact your intervention getting to practice. And up there in that link where you see the little play button, that is a video that we've comprised to really go even deeper into PRISM for you to be able to get a better understanding. And that is done by uh, Dr. Borsega Rabin. So let's talk about our core issues in understanding REAIM and PRISM. And we're gonna go through the next few slides and we're gonna discuss the purpose, the definitions, why all dimensions are important, and the pragmatic use of REAIM. So REAIM was designed to translate research to practice and we put it together as a puzzle. We're trying to identify those puzzle pieces that help impact our input intervention getting to implementation, getting delivered. And it does this through balancing internal and external validity to help your empirical results have meaning. And it emphasizes representativeness and equity because it is equally important to know who you're reaching, but even more important to know who you're not reaching. So that way your intervention can be as impactful as possible. And finally, we do that through addressing multi-level contextual factors at both an individual and organizational level. And we do that through experimental and observational studies. And it all comes back to this example here, this is an example that a lot of members of the REAIM National Steering Committee like to use because it shows how impactful implementation can be. So let's think about an intervention that is 100% effective. And it can only be as good though as the people that it reaches. So when you think about different phases of implementation, it starts with, is it adopted widely, including in low resource settings? Do local stakeholders identify and deliver this intervention? Uh, can it be implemented consistently and with quality? Is it reaching its intended audience? And finally, can it be sustained? And if you thought about a 70% threshold for each of those stages that I just mentioned, you would end up with an intervention that was about 17% impactful. And that means a lot. So that even means with the perfect intervention, you know, it could be rendered, you know, ineffective if it's not able to be impactful when you consider the ways that implementation impacts that. 
So let's talk about how Reaim is helping address this issue, and we're gonna go through each of the domains or outcomes of Reaim. So let's start with Reach. Reach emphasizes who is intended to benefit from your intervention and who actually participates in it. So it considers all of those that are eligible for your intervention and then who you actually reach. And I'm gonna use an example as we go through this of just a medicine, like a pill that you would use. So your pill would be the ones that would be the reach or your attendant audience that have a disease or outcome that that uh, pill would treat. Your effectiveness would be typically measured in the way that your intervention has already been shown to be effective. So I, you know, the assumption here is that if you're implementing it, that you've already shown that your intervention is effective. And so typically you use those same measures. And it's important with implementation though, as we get further down, that it can be impactful to effectiveness, which is why it's important to keep collecting that data. But first, before we even get there, we have to talk about adoption, which is where is the intervention applied? So the setting. Uh, and who applied it? So what practitioner delivers it? So in the pill example, that might be a physician, could be a nurse practitioner, could be a clinician or a practitioner of some sort. And then to implementation, uh, how consistently was it delivered? So that's where it gets to fidelity or how was it delivered as intended? And that could be impactful on effectiveness, which is why it's important to keep that in consideration. And we also include in here, how much did it cost to deliver? What was the cost to the adopters, those that it reached? And then why did the result come about? And that's why I mentioned keeping account of that effectiveness data because sometimes if an intervention is delivered as intended, you could end up having changes in your effectiveness outcome. And then finally, there's maintenance, which maintenance is considered to be the long-term factor, which could be how long is it being delivered still? Or, you know, is it still being effective after a certain period of time? And we want to highlight that while, you know, maintenance is often considered long-term, it really can be put into the context of your intervention. So it could be as long, you know, as short as two months. It could be six to 12 months. Uh, it really just matters on the intervention that you're looking at. But let's talk about the ways that we're able to present these dimensions to you. So we have resources on our website that go through each of the REAIM outcomes as it's shown here. And so with the technical definition, it really shows the way that you would present that measure. So for adoption, it shows that it's proportion of the absolute number of those that could be reached. So your denominator or anybody that's eligible to adopt your intervention in your top part, your numerator, which is the ones that actually reaches. And we even emphasize here that it's important to collect qualitative data here from not just those that do adopt, but also from those that choose not to adopt your intervention. So the pragmatic definition is where is the program applied? So what's that setting and who applied it? And also I should highlight that at the bottom of a lot of these slides, there are citations that you can go to to learn more about what we're presenting on these slides. But how has REAIM evolved into prison? And over the next few slides, we're gonna go over how REAIM has evolved in the past 20 years and how it led to PRISM. So let's talk about this summary of the evolution. So there was research done in 2000, 2006 that just highlighted that even if an intervention was adopted and delivered in a similar way by similar individuals, that outcomes can still be different. And that's why it was important to start to get an understanding of the external environment. There's an external factors, there's contextual factors that surround implementation. And so thus came around PRISM, which PRISM drew from existing models such as the diffusion of innovations, the model for healthcare improvement, and the chronic care model to help be able to understand what was happening. And it's led to where we are today as thinking about over the last 20 years, which that is what the citation right next to me appears like. So REAIM is one of the most widely used frameworks. It's often mandated by funders and the original model has been expanded to ex focus on adaptations and sustainability. And we've also included emphasis on the how and why through qualitative methods and capturing the cost and we also want to encourage pragmatic use because real world settings is where you're going to learn the most about how your intervention is going to be impactful in implementation. We've also been working on packaging this resource to be able to be used by non-researchers as well. We want REAIM to be adaptable and used by anybody that has use for REAIM. And finally, we've talked about integrating REAIM with other models and PRISM is a fantastic example of that. But let's go through 
some of these common misconceptions about reaim and prism i want to highlight this link that is right next to me uh, this is a video done by dr jody haltrup who has also written the manuscript that you see here that addresses these misconceptions in a lot more detail so i do urge you to go ahead and check those resources out but i'm going to go over briefly what these different misconceptions are so reaim is not only for evaluation it is also meant for planning of getting your intervention to practice. So it's planning for implementation. And you can use each of those reaim outcome measures to go ahead and decide what might need to change about your intervention, how it need to be focused, so that way you could get um, the best implementation outcome. And that also goes into quantitative versus qualitative measures. Reaim is not just quantitative. We have a lot of resources on our website for qualitative measures so you can understand the how and the why as I've been saying a few times already in this presentation. And then finally, mandating that all dimensions are equally important is not necessarily true. It's okay that you wouldn't include some of the dimensions in your work because it might not fit within the scope of the work you're doing right now. You might not be looking at the long-term results right now in the manuscript and the work that you're doing at this moment, and that's okay. You just need to justify why you're not including a certain dimension inside your work. And then we are going to get into health equity. Health equity is something that we emphasize in the REAM framework. We talk often about what is the representativeness of those that we're reaching in our implementation efforts for interventions and adoption. We talk about that all the time, and this image really helps sort of show it. So this image here is, you know, these are all hypothetical numbers, but what it highlights that even if your intervention shows that it can be effective in all kinds of demographics, that doesn't mean that it's reaching all those demographics. That doesn't mean it's getting adopted by all those demographics. And you can lose, as we talked about earlier, you can lose impact through each of those dimensions or outcomes if you don't take that into account. And that's what we're trying to highlight here. And we even get further into it in the reaim outcomes cascade. So I really like this slide because it shows how reaim is actually looks when you're getting into the actual implementation measures of your intervention because it all starts with adoption. And so adoption, if you don't have anybody adopting or delivering your intervention, then obviously you can't collect any of the other outcomes. And I really like that we define in this era, this um, slide the arrows here that sort of show where gaps can occur between them. And we also add emphasis of ways that you can reduce the gap or loss of impact. So we start with adoption, we move to implementation, which is are those adopters delivering the intervention as they should? Are they adapting it? How much did it cost? And then you get to reach. So who are the adopters actually reaching, those delivering it, who are they reaching with this intervention? And then you get your effectiveness data. And if you go for a long period of time, you get into maintenance. And so I really like this slide because it really helps when you're thinking about putting your grants together and things like that, how it really looks when you're implementing. And with that, we're just going to summarize real quick what we've talked about. And we've talked about the outcomes for the framework REAIM and the model with PRISM. And we're talking about how both of them can be used for planning, implementation, dissemination, sustainment, health equity, and evaluation, and how REAIM will continue to evolve to address issues and new challenges. And with this slide, what I really want to emphasize is that there are a lot of key REAIM uh, references that we urge you to go check out when you're trying to put together something to use REAIM or PRISM. And we also have a special editions REAIMs and Frontiers of Public Health that we can also point you towards that has uh, a lot of references that we at the National Screening Committee have actually looked at. And finally, I want to point you directly towards our website. Our website has a lot of key resources that you can look at for guidance and grant applications, quantitative means, qualitative means, uh, webinars, and we also have an overview right here done by Dr. Russ Glasgow to help you navigate the website so you can see exactly what you're getting into. With that, I really appreciate your time today, and I hope that this really helps you in presenting this to your own audience.